This is EE 2902, Spring 2014, Week 5, Lecture 2. So today we'll do an example of a FSM Mod 5 Sequence Generator to give us, to give you more practice in designing FSMs. Okay. Note that from next week we're going to start our project, so you got to be very comfortable with model sim, uh, signal type, which we'll do next lecture. And I told you last lecture, it's high, highly recommend you understand how to do timing closure. Anyway, uh, so today, uh, and also today I'll cover like some more uh, BHDL syntax, specifically the uh, case statement. But the syntax is not really the issue. You got to really think and understand how uh, the VHDL translates into hardware. Okay. So the problem statement is, Uh, design an FSM that outputs the remainder when an arbitrary length, not size, length integer is divided by five. Okay, so it's an arbitrary length integer. That's the key. Right? That is the big so that will make That's what makes this problem interesting. But basically, however, we're computing the remainder or the modulus, the mod. Right. So it's called. That's what it's called as a mod five sequence generator. And the solution, basically, when designing any financial machine, we must we should try to obtain the next state function, but for most practical FSMs, for example, SDRAM interface, the mathematical definition of the next state function is not possible. However, for this case, for this design, it is possible, and I rec and you should refer to the online references and I'm smiling because like I keep saying there's a lot of reference designs online on the 29 I mean on the digital systems website under the 2902 tab and instead of blindly Google searching I've, al I've already told you this in lecture not to Google search and blindly copy designs that are available on like a variety of websites the only website I would trust are the digital systems design website and Altera or any vendors like Altera Xilinx's reference designs okay and of course, reference designs from any other reputed professors. However, all that searching is unnecessary. The material you need for not only our digital logic sequence, for any digital logic sequence, the material that you will help you understand the concepts are available on the digital systems website. Okay, this was my this was the primary task I was hired to at uh, had to do at MSOE. I'm just what I what really surprised me was before I came to MSOE in 2009. They were using the up to board, which was outdated in the late 20th century. Okay, so anyway. But the reference design, oops, ah, the reference design is online. Okay. Uh, and if you open the reference design, the bottom of what I'm trying to say is you can mathematically obtain the next state equation, right? However, the thing to realize is can you, we can. Can you get the number of states required, the minimum uh, number of states? Because obviously, any number, let's say n is the minimum number of states required to solve the problem. Any state machine with n plus 1 and higher states, higher number of states would work, right? But in this case, for this design, we can see that if we use the remainder as the state we require five states to store remainder um, zero one two three and four because these are the only possible remainders that we can obtain when an, even if the length of the integer is arbitrary now, in order to 
implement our design on the D1 board, we will use a simple user I.O. Okay, that is key three, that is we'll input in binary. So key three, input one, key two, input zero, and I think key one is compute remainder. Let me see. Uh, key two is for bit zero, key three is for input. Key one is computing remainder. Or display remainder, not compute. Display remainder, as we'll see. Key zero. is reset okay so let me sp draw the fire state transition diagram okay and then we'll examine the VH uh, the quarter specification right so here's my reset state and this is obviously remained in zero state this is the reset signal coming in right and obviously my output is zero okay now as long as i get a zero so as long as the input zero is asserted i stay in the state and then the moment I get a one i go to r1 to display one Now let's say I'm getting like a bunch of zeros, a one and a zero, then my input is a, it's binary one zero, it's a two. So if I get an input zero, okay, I go to state two and I display a remainder of two. From here, if I get an input one, okay, I go to state three, correct? Because then I'm getting zero, 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 one, one, so that's three. Now from two, if I get a one, I'm, I'll get a, for example, if I get all zeros, one, zero, a one, one, zero, one is a five, all right? So five and divided by five, quotient is one, remainder is zero. So I go back to this state, input one, and from here, if I get a zero, that's a four. So quotient when five is divided by, or when four is divided by five is zero, uh, remainder is a four. I was about to say one. So there's that. Okay. Uh, and then obviously we have to make sure we have taken care of every possible transitions from each state. Right? So that. Uh, let's see. Now obviously the state when you get a zero. So one one zero is a six. That is. I get, let's say I keep getting input zero, then one, one, zero, right? So you go back to remainder one, and if I get a one, it's a seven, again, zero, 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 one, 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 quotient is one, remainder is two. Finally, from this state, I get one, zero, 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 that's a eight, okay? So you get an um, quotient of one again, remainder of three, and then if I get uh, one, I stay in this state. For example, zero 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 one zero zero one. Okay, one whatever. So here's my finite state, uh, my state transition diagram specification for the finite state machine. Now something interesting, what I've done or not done 
is I've just assumed that my input is always zero and then let's say I get a one, I get a zero. How do I know, for example, that this state transition one, zero, 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 one will give me the right remainder? Well, there is my, my the length of my integer is arbitrary, right? So how do I know I'll always get the correct remainder? That's when this next state function is imperative, all right? Because that's the only way you can mathematically prove that your finite state or your state transition diagram specifies the finite state machine exactly. And like I said, for this problem, you can actually get the mathematical next state function and prove that this should, this actually works, that this, that this here's the next state equation, right? Then that corresponds to this finite state uh, transition diagram. And I leave that to you as an exercise. Uh, because I don't have enough time to go over it in this lecture. Plus, uh, well, I don't want to point to 11:50 p.m. Recording this late night. I have only nine more minutes. So let's get into the VHDL, right? So here's the Mod 5 sequence generator. The top is all uh, standard, okay? And I use a one megahertz clock for this, just for kicks. And I don't actually know. Looking at it, I don't have a PLL. You should put a PLL in here. It'll be a good exercise to buffer the 50 megahertz input clock. Uh, but then, so let's look at this. So coming in as a 50 megahertz input clock, right? Then let's look at the Mod 5 FSM. And basically, like we discussed a couple of lectures ago, the way you want to specify the FSM is to make sure that the state memory is a separate process and the state transition logic is a separate process. But within the process, what I didn't discuss last time, and it's very simple, the VHDL syntax, I have this case structure. So, and within the case structure, I determine if bit zero is asserted or bit one is asserted, and then I move to the appropriate state, okay? Um, and the thing about case is, if you don't take care of all the possible states, by the way, I use type definition, that's the other thing I didn't discuss. So I define this type state consisting of my state mnemonics, all right, if you will, and present state next state is of this type. So if you look at, let's do the analysis and synthesis, um, while it's working on that, uh, basically looking at the rest of the VHDL spec, pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, basically, to display remainder, I simply use a D flip-flop that is clocked using key one. I, I believe when I discussed this design in lecture, I didn't have a display remainder functionality, but whatever, here it is, if you wanted to utilize it. And notice I can use key as a clock signal because it is debounced. Okay, hardware debounced. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is the fact that since we are using um, state is used. Oh, that was the change. Let me see if I can undo. Yeah, there. So that's what I changed. Choose again. So basically, what I'm trying to say is because we have defined our state as a mnemonic type the synthesizer can actually infer a finite state machine instead of simply displaying registers for our FSM. I mean, you can look at the register view, if you look at the technology map viewer, uh, but that's not very instructive. So on the netlist viewer, let's get into the RTL viewer and look at the um, this finite state machine. Again, if you go in here, notice this is in yellow. So here's the interpretation of the state machine, and here it is. Okay, so I think this nicely in here are all the uh, input conditions, etc. So you can compare this picture to what we have here, and it might be the same. I say might because Cordes does, like I described a couple of lectures ago, the synthesizers for FPGAs not only Cordes use one hard encoding. So and it may display the expanded state machine here, right? but whatever. So here's the, or it may even simplify it further first. Anyway, but there is our FSM, and what I'm gonna run now, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a functional simulation. I've already done that, and in, actually in this uh, project folder, I do have the functional simulation, and I recommend you look at it. 
to perform more practice with models and but getting back so let's look at uh, the one megahertz clock because that's what I'm using as my clock and you can see present state so let's zoom in on active cursor okay. and then reset so I'm in or zero okay present state so if I go to the next rising edge you can see that since my input oh yeah my input is still a zero I mean uh, no I got one right so what's going on here zero and one Oh, that's right. So I got a one. I got zero one, and then I went into state odd one, so my remainder is one. Okay, and then next time it's when I get a one again, I go into state three. There you go. But it should be on the rising edge of the clock. Okay, and you can see present state is synchronous. And then when I get a, a one, my output is three. All right. And then when I get a one again, let's see, seven, that's right, my remainder is two, okay, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you should run through your, uh, you should run this, or you should simulate this design using models to understand what's going on. All right, I'm getting tired, as you saw the time, it's around midnight. And yeah, I'm done with this lecture. So next time we'll actually wrap up uh, basically 2902 in the sense uh, we're gonna the final idea. It's not really an idea. The final tool left is signal tap. We'll do a switch to bounce example. And after this, after week five, starting in week six, we'll just get into the project and do a lot of reference designs. Okay. All right. See you next time.